So when the nodes join the moon, we have an expression of feminine energy first that's really powerful. Um, we'll see when Rahu joins the moon, it brings a certain amount of emotional sort of transparency. You know, again, Rahu and Ketu tend to accelerate the energies either externally or internally with the moon because it's the indicator of internal life and the emotions themselves. When Rahu has joined the moon, it tends to accelerate the mind and the heart and the emotions sort of beyond what feels grounded and what feels tangible. And since the moon itself is our connection to the senses and the mind and the consciousness, Rahu moon can really feel ungrounded. Um, and it's kind of like our emotional perceptions are like accelerated and they're outside of our field of existence, outside of the sense mind itself. So it often is said to bring psychic phenomena. Of course, that would mean like psychic emotional phenomena, but the nodes themselves have to do with psychic perception, which is just perception beyond the senses. When it's Rahu or Ketu join the moon, it is related to the emotions. So there'll be accelerated emotional intuition, like for instance, Rahu moon and the person will feel into another person's heart very easily. Again, it's not always an easy thing to have this kind of emotional um, intuition that's beyond what feels grounded and within our control. So Rahu Moon also, as I said, tends to accelerate the feminine quality of life, whether it's for a man or a woman. Of course, when it's a woman who has Rahu Moon, she can become very attractive to men um, because that emotional intuition and that emotional feeling is very extended. It's very pushed out. When you have K2 Moon, it's more of an implosive force. So it's more like the emotions are very deep and instead of being accelerated into the other person and exciting and expanding their emotional reality, it's actually very concentrated and it tends to pull others into their feeling quality. So you'll see often with K2 Moon, the person will have a deep kind of, um, you know, sort of hypnotic effect on others, a sort of hypnotic emotional effect on others. They'll have a lot of skill and mastery understanding a person's emotional realm. Like when they get around someone, they'll be able to really feel into the heart of that person and um, feel what's alive in them. And often, you know, because Rahu and Ketu have these qualities with the past and the future, as it relates to psychic phenomena, you know, Rahu will often have, when it's Rahu Moon, that person will often have a kind of psychic awareness of the future. When it's Ketu Moon, they'll often have a psychic awareness of the past. And you'll see this sort of with um, certain kinds of metaphysical teachers, like if they have Rahu Moon, they'll often be good at making predictions about the future. If it's Ketu Moon, they'll often be good at making predictions about the past, be interested in like the past lives and things of that nature. So Ketu as always, brings that sort of internal focus and awareness and Rahu external. So Rahu Moon expands that emotional perception very wide. K2 Moon pulls it inward and has it be something that, you know, where the person will often draw emotional attention and be able to feel where that person, where the other person has come from emotionally and psychologically. And again, I say this about others a lot with the moon because the moon is really the indicator of others. It's really the karika of our connections with others. So again, all other things are considered equal. The nodes interrupt and disrupt and bring confusion and awareness based on the houses that the planet rules, so whatever houses the moon rules. I should say whatever house the moon rules will also get interrupted by this. But in general, you'll see the perceptions of the moon um, and that sort of consciousness will be expanded with Rahu and sort of contracted and internalized with Ketu.